All right, good morning. Pastor Rick here. Uh, just looking to continue our journey in our Wisdom in October. A uh, little reading program together as we're going through the book of Proverbs together. One chapter per day. We're at October 8th right now. So we're in Proverbs 8. And uh, it is lovingly titled Wisdom's Appeal. So the Wisdom's Appeal in the book of Proverbs quite often there is kind of the personification, if you will, of wisdom. That wisdom takes on kind of the picture of a woman calling out and drawing people in and we've seen um, another woman in the book of proverbs the the harlot the um, the seductress the the prostitute kind of secretly coming to people and trying to seduce them and pull them uh, down into a path of destruction wisdom on the other hand uh, as it says in verse one of chapter eight doesn't wisdom call out doesn't understanding make her voice heard and that's what I love about God and his call to us is you know, he broadcasts the call all over the place to come one, anyone who will come, come, come to him because he wants us to come to him. And, and so, you know, what, what is wisdom? Wisdom is the, the ability to apply knowledge and understanding that we're able to not just understand, not just know the thing, but to be able to properly apply the, the knowledge to the appropriate situations um and there there is even a a point in here where it talks about it's like common sense that uh, as you grow as you grow in wisdom it's it's really like having common sense and um i'm struggling to find exactly which verse it was but uh i promise you it's in there so you should go check it out uh no, very there we go verse five learn to be shrewd you who are inexperienced and develop common sense you who are foolish um you know it's like the common statement you know i guess common sense isn't very common anymore uh well i think that the further that you remove yourself away from god then that's very true common sense is tied in with wisdom wisdom comes from god and so when we try to be a people that are full of understanding then we divorce ourselves away from God, we're going to look foolish. And that's just the way it is. Like you can feel really smart. You can feel like you know what's going on. You can, you can even talk to people as if you are the smartest person in the room. But if you have abandoned the fear of God, if you've abandoned following after his ways and seeking him, you'll just end up looking foolish because common sense is tied up in wisdom. Wisdom is tied up in God comes from him he's the only source of wisdom proverbs 1 7 says that the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom we need to be a people who fear the lord awe reverence surrender as we bring our lives before the lord we surrender our lives before him then the benefits of wisdom begin to be released in our lives some of those things that are that are benefits I mean, it establishes the value in verse 9 and 10. All of them are clear to the perceptive and right to those who discover knowledge. Accept my instruction instead of silver and knowledge rather than pure gold. For wisdom is better than jewels and nothing desirable can equal it. Like that's, that's the kind of value. That's the kind of value that wisdom brings into our lives and we need to at times and you know we need to reevaluate we need to reprioritize what we are aiming for because sometimes we can trick ourselves or we can be deceived by other things to pursue things that in the end are not helpful they're not actually life-giving they're not actually maybe even righteous so it says uh the fear of the lord so we said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Here's a little bit more. Verse 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, to hate arrogant pride, evil conduct and perverse speech. I possess good advice and sound wisdom. I have understanding and strength. So I just thought, man, that's, you know, we need to be a people that hate evil, arrogant pride, evil conduct and perverse speech and not be a people that are just happy to engage in those things. We need to put away evil, put away arrogant pride, put away evil conduct. And uh, maybe maybe one of the most challenging ones of this whole thing is to put away perverse speech. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's nothing you've ever struggled with, but I know I definitely 
have to watch my tongue. You know, I have to watch the the testimony of my mouth. What's coming out of my mouth? Am I am I saying things that are building up, encouraging, strengthening people, or am I slipping into a pattern of more perverse speech of some kind? And I love verse seventeen. It says, "Those who love me, I love those who love me, and those who search for me find me." And that's a beautiful thing about God and making Himself accessible and available to us. Uh, we don't deserve it. It's not like we did anything to deserve God to reach out to us and to make a way. And yet he's saying, search for me, seek after me with all of your heart and you will find me. What a blessing. What, thank you, Jesus, for making a way for us. Anyone who listens to me is happy, watching at my doors every day, waiting by the posts of my doorway. For the one who finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. You know, in wisdom, like the best way to say it is wisdom comes from God. There's no other place to get wisdom. And really that, that means that wisdom is found in relationship with Jesus. So just like Paul so frequently said, you know, specifically in the book of Philippians, that, that he's considered every other part of his life to be garbage to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ because in knowing Christ is all the rest of the stuff. Matthew chapter 6, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added unto you. So really, the secret of wisdom is digging into the presence of God. It is to prioritize time, you know, it's just like it says, and those who search for me, find me. How's your searching going? How's, are you setting time aside to dig in and to seek after him? Because I think the warning then in verse 36, but the one who misses me harms himself and all who hate me love death. That that's the, that's the opposite path. There's, there's seeking after him and finding favor and life. Or we can miss him and we can then fall into a pattern of wanting to harm ourselves and loving death. Because when we love sin, we essentially love death, right? Because all sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. And so, I don't know, man. It's, you know, wisdom comes from God. We find wisdom when we seek after it. And it's probably better to say when we seek after him. We find wisdom when we seek after him. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who find it find life, and obtain favor, obtain grace from God. Let's be a people that seek after Jesus. And, and, and it's, I think it's worth pointing out that those things, you know, the, the fear of the Lord, you, you hate evil, you hate, you hate evil actions, you hate perverse speech, you hate arrogant pride. It, has, it says nothing about hating people. So even people that engage in those things, we don't hate the people, but we hate the evil we hate the evil actions. We hate the evil perverse speech because we know what those things bring. And so let's be a people that love people like crazy. Just like in Ephesians 6, it says that um, our wep- that our, our warfare is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of this dark age. So that we, we don't want to confuse who the enemy is. So... Uh, I hope you enjoyed reading Proverbs 8 today. I hope you're journaling. I hope you're allowing the Holy Spirit to speak something fresh in your heart. And then hopefully, hopefully this little video also helps in the journey as well. And I would encourage you to hit the subscribe button to to follow along all the rest of the content for the rest of the month and uh, whatever other exciting things we embark on going into November. Um, as we head into the Thanksgiving season and then the Christmas season, there's going to be a lot of things to, to talk about and to celebrate and to share with other people. So I hope you'll come along for the journey. And, um, and yeah, so subscribe, hit the little bell. It'll remind you when the videos post so you don't have to try to remember it on your own. And, uh, and, and share it with someone else. Share it with someone else. And drop in the comments what God's speaking to you from his word because we believe... God's word is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And sometimes it's hard to even talk about because it's so great. But anyways, I hope you have an amazing day. God bless you. And I'll see you tomorrow for chapter nine.